Hi everybody, I'm Susanna and I blog here at Simple Moments Stick. Um, I'm linking up with the girl behind the blog today. And so welcome to any of you who stopped by from that link up. I'm excited to have you. Make sure you leave a comment down below with um, a way of me checking out your blog. I would love to get to know each and every one of you. Um, so today's topic for the girl behind the blog is vacation story. Uh, my story is, I guess it's sort of a vacation. I went and lived in Ethiopia for a summer, the summer after my junior year of high school. Um, I went and lived with an Ethiopian family. My mom um, worked with some orphanages in Ethiopia, so she knew the people I was staying with. Um, and I went over and helped out in an orphanage and a hospital um, for the summer. It was amazing. Um, but this story happened during my time there. Um, the last couple weeks, actually it could be the last week, um, while I was down, I was seven hours out of the capital city helping out at a hospital that the husband of the family I was staying with was a surgeon. Um, and my parents were in Ethiopia at that point, picking up my youngest, well, last of my siblings. They weren't there to help the youngest. Um, I have for those of you who are new, I have 11 brothers and sisters, nine of whom are adopted internationally. Um, six of those are from Ethiopia. So uh, the last three, the last three we were adopting at that point. So my parents were over picking them up. Um, and so they came down to where I was staying. I was in a town, um, a very small town, down seven hours south of the capital. Um, and my parents came down because that's where one of my brothers was from. He was from a village somewhere outside that town. Um, and they wanted the opportunity to hopefully find where he was from. They came down. Um, the medical missionary who had originally found my brother, um, found out his story, found out he was an orphan, um, got the paperwork signed from his village elders saying he wasn't working, was available for adoption. Um, and then she was the one who took him up to the orphanage where we began the adoption. Um, she was down there. So um, my parents came down, the three of us met up with her and she said she could show us as far as she knew where he was from. So we all jump in her track. Um, we have her who speaks um, English and will lighten the, the area's language, not the national. Um, and then a Ethiopian man who worked with my mom with the orphanages. Um, he was there, so he spoke, there's something to play later, he spoke um, English, the national language, and the village language. Um, and then a little nine-year-old boy who was living with a medical missionary who was Ethiopian, um, and he spoke English, the national, well, he spoke the national language, a little bit of English, and a little bit of the village language. So we jump in the truck, go drive in to um, a smaller than the town, but bigger than a village, I don't know, area where she had her clinic. And that's where she met my brother. Um, so she was there. And she was like, okay, this is where I met him. This direction is where he would always come from. I don't know anything further than that. So we're like, well, let's see what we can find. Um, so sh we all get back in the truck um, and go driving the direction she told us. And my parents had a picture of my brother from, he had been adopted two years earlier. So from when he was first adopted uh, two years earlier, and we drove down the street. Each person we would pass, um, we would ask them, well, we wouldn't ask them because they don't speak English, but um, the people who spoke the language would ask them, do you recognize this boy? Um, the first couple people didn't, and I mean, we figured they probably wouldn't. How likely is it that we find somebody? But finally, a man, um, an elderly Ethiopian man, said, 
yeah, I know this boy and I know where he's from. And we're like, have you seen him more recently? And, you know, we're Americans. Um, obviously, we have more money than the average Ethiopian, especially in that region. Um, so he could have just wanted money. But so we asked a couple of questions like, you know, have you seen him recently? He's like, oh no, he hasn't been here for years. Um, he was taken to the capital um, and put in an orphanage. And I'm like, oh, if you know all that, you know, more than likely you're legit. So he jumps in the truck with us and we go off driving again. He's going to take us to the village. Um, we drive for a little bit further and come to a creek, river, small river, big creek, something with a log bridge that the truck couldn't drive over. And my brother had told us um, that on his, whenever he would go to um, the clinic, he would have to cross over a uh, log bridge. I'm like, okay, this this seems like it is real. So um, we had to figure out what we were going to do since we couldn't take the truck. And the missionary said she couldn't leave the truck. It wasn't safe to leave it by itself. And also, it wasn't safe for her to be left with the truck. So, we had to leave her and the Ethiopian man that my mom knew. Um, the only two people that spoke English and the um, village language. Um, we had to leave them with the truck. So, my parents and me, and this little Ethiopian man who doesn't speak English, and this little boy who was coming to serve as our translator, spoke a little bit of English, a little bit of the um, tribal language, um, but obviously spoke the national language fluently. Um, we go off walking through the African jungle. Um, so he, the, the older man had told us it was like a 10, 15 minute walk, not a problem. 45 minutes later, we're still walking. Um, my dad's starting to mark the ground, kind of um, bend branches and stuff to, so we could find our way back if it was something that um, wasn't safe. I mean, we didn't really think it would be, but you know, it's taking a lot longer. Who knows where he's taking us? Um, so we we keep going, hoping that it's safe. Um, so yeah, 45 minutes later, we finally get to a clearing, um, and there's an elderly woman walking in the square um, that's surrounded by a bunch of huts. Um, and we go up to her and the trans or the Ethiopian man who knew what we were looking for showed her my brother's picture and she, without him having to say anything, she fell on the floor um, and yelled out, Alleluia Yeshua, um, which obviously is translated, thank you, Jesus. And um, through the little boy who was kind of able to pick up on what was going on, um, we found out that she was his aunt. Um, and the last she had heard of my brother, he had been taken to the capital city um, to be put in an orphanage. And from there, they didn't know what to happen to him. Um, so we were able to meet her. She obviously introduces us to the whole village, who are just ecstatic. Um, you know, their lost little boy, they they finally knew what had happened to him. Um, we got to see um, the hut he had grown up in, the mango tree he said he used to climb and hide in when he didn't want to work. Um, we got to um, meet all sorts of relatives, extended, extended relatives. Um, and it was it was incredible. Um, thankfully, somebody there was able to speak English, so um, he 
um, was able to translate it for us. And we were really able to just know what was going on and be able to talk with these people and be able to just let them know that Andrew, my brother, um, was in a safe, loving family, was in America growing up. Um, and they were all just so blessed to know that. Um, and since then, Andrew's actually been able to go back twice um, because we knew where his village was. He was able to then go see his family and um, get to know all of them um, outside of obviously being living there. And um, he's hoping to be able to, then, once he, he's in college, once he graduates college, he's hoping to go back and really be able to help his biological family um, since he has been blessed in being in the Dominican family and getting the education and everything that he needs. Um, so yeah, that's my incredible God-filled story of um, my vacation story. Not really a vacation story like I said, but that's okay. Um, yeah, like I said, if you're stopping by from the girl behind the block, I'd love to get to know you, leave a comment below. Sorry, this is so much longer than it's supposed to be. But <laughs> that's what happens when you get me telling a story. So, yeah, thank you, and I look forward to getting to know some of you. Okay, bye.